in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 13, for if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. And if we are of sound mind, it is for you. That's the people of God. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. What is Paul saying? What are some of the things that governs his life as a Christian? It's God, a Godward mindset that what he does, he truly longs to do it for God. Now, let me ask you a question. The life that you live, the lifestyle in which you walk, is it for God? If we were to open up the heart chamber that holds the motivation, would we see that you really are doing what you do for God? Think, discern, examine. Is it out of love for him and out of love for his people? Verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature in your innermost being. Are you a new creature with new desires? Christianity is not picking up a book and finding all these new principles to live by. It's just religion. It's just rule keeping. It's just Phariseeism. Is your life marked by worship? Not just I've got to worship, not just I've got to do this, a forced thing, a disciplined thing, a thing I must make myself do. Even though at times we must crucify the flesh, we must discipline ourselves and we must worship. But the true believer, their life will be marked by worship. Not having to worship, but desiring to worship. Now surrender, repent, believe the gospel, turn away from your wickedness and your worldliness and your playing church and trust in Christ who is mighty to save. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Praise the Lord. God bless you, family. God, it's your brother DJ Sandberg right here on the Blaze Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here at Soul Winners with a Z.org. Also on all the social media that's available that I'm on, that I'm streaming. And for all the bootleggers, shout out to y'all, yeah, man. Y'all yeah, bootlegging me well. I love it. So there's another Selah Radio Network in you know, Egypt and Russia and all that stuff, but it's all good. Why? Because you're helping me spread the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And how that happens, I don't know. Um, people hack. They hack into things, and hopefully they're not using the network for other purposes other than how I want to use the network is to spread the gospel message of our powerful, amazing Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of Nazareth. Amen. We're talking about the Lord of hosts, amen, um, the Lord of God, God's army, amen, of angel's army, so we're there, let me just put the website there, so let me take it out for a minute, because I want to greet some people that are on with me already, they were sharp, amen, brother Damien, God bless you brother, uh, welcome to the Blaze Bible study, I had to straighten out where I'm at right now, this is not the morning Devo, this is the Blaze, uh, 10 p.m. at night, amen. Uh, Pastor Michael Jakes, God bless you. My friend and my brother, God bless you. If you don't know about Pastor Michael Jakes, follow him. He does, you think I do a lot of live streams and Bible studies and teachings and sermons and all that? He's the man. He's the man with the plan. So follow him. Make sure you follow him. Connect with him. And you will be blessed by his ministry on social media as well. Sister Joyce, God bless you. Welcome to the Blaze Bible Study. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. It's, it's, you know, it's nighttime now, you know, I'm getting into my zone. I get my second wind back at night. I'm a night owl, amen. Not a morning person, but I'm a night owl. And God is faithful at how he um, allows me to even have a night to get any type of wind, right? To get any type of energy, right? So I have it. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, a topic that touches the heart of God. It really does, because when I study it out and I see all the places all over the scripture that God is talking about this topic, I'm like, wow, God, you, you're really concerned uh, with the poor and the needy and how we should freely give. The Bible says, Jesus said that the poor will always be among us. And who are the among us people, the ones who are not poor, that are able to freely give and to freely share. So we're doing that tonight. Amen. Hopefully that we'll be inspired to continue to give 
um, to the poor. Amen, Sister Mary Jealous. God bless you. Welcome to the blaze. It's time for the word. Yes, yes. And I left my phone all the way over there on the other side of the studio. So I have to get it because I have to start sharing this out. But in the meantime, let's pray. If you have any prayer requests, questions, concerns, comments, anything like that, you know how it is. If this is your first time on the Blaze Bible Study, what this is, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. What this is, is a 25 to 30 minute Bible study. Online, virtual, you could interact, you could um, put reactions on the screen, you could ask a question, you can make a comment. If you have any concerns about what's being said, or maybe you don't even agree with, with, with what's being said, this is an open forum, amen. Uh, we just ask that everybody keep all the verbiage clean, and I will delete any kind of like, um, you know, perversion or anything like that, pictures or whatever. But other than that, it's a free conversation, open conversation, an honest conversation, right, about the Word of God. And also, prayer requests. Listen, you, you ask for prayer requests, we usually pray on the spot, right here on the spot. But if you don't want to make it public, you could always inbox me, or you could even email me at djsamrock at soulwinnerswithaz.org. And also on the screen, on the lower side of the screen, on the left side or the right side, I don't know how you look at the screen, um, but you see the website where you could actually sow a seed, amen, sow a seed to those, you'll be helping those who are in need. You will help this ministry, help other ministries, other ministries, and help other families, amen, and thank you so much again. I can't thank you enough for everyone who has sowed seed into this ministry. You have allowed this ministry to do so much in the community and beyond that your seed has traveled beyond the nation, beyond the United States of America. And that's all glory to God. So thank you so much for the seed that was sown. And I pray 100 fold return blessing back to your life for sowing seed. Because I truly believe in seed time, harvest time. I believe it with all my heart. I've experienced it. I continue to experience it every now and then. And also the seeds that I planted years ago or yesterday or today, some way along the line, somewhere along the line, those seeds are going to die, right? Go into the earth and sprout a harvest. I truly believe that. But I pray 100 fold blessing in return to everyone who has ever sold into this ministry. And whether it be a financial breakthrough, a health breakthrough, whether it be a relational uh, breakthrough, wherever, whether it be favor in your job, favor as a uh, owner of a business, you know, whatever God has for you, I pray 100 fold in return that you will receive the blessings of the Lord for sowing a seed into this ministry. That's how much I believe. Listen, if you haven't heard the story, let me tell you real quick. Then we're going to pray. Then I'm going to give you one minute to share this out. Then I got to hope that my phone is on the other side of the studio because I usually place things down and walk away and that's it. I don't know where it's at anymore. So real quick story. When I first got saved, it was like maybe two weeks. I was two weeks old in the faith or three weeks or maybe a month. But I know I was brand new in the faith, right? I was at church, uh, the church I was attending back then. And it was time to sow a seed. I didn't know what that was, you know, offering, tithe, and all. I didn't know what that was for sure. But all I knew is that I had $7 left in my pocket. $7 left to my name. So you know what that means. It's $7 in your pocket and then Sam. That's it. So I was prompted to sow that last $7. That was my sacrifice sowing. That was my sacrifice, sacrificial seed. I put that in the offering and that was it. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen at that after that. So I went home, um, you know, went back to work. You know, things were normal. Following week, I went back to church. The next week in my mailbox, there was a check for seven hundred dollars in my mailbox. Two weeks later or a week later, I think it was one or two weeks later in my mailbox from a company that I completely forgot I even worked for. And they said that they owed me money. That's God. <laughs> Ain't no company saying that they owed me anything. So they owed me money from, um, uh, what was it, profit sharing and all this other stuff. $700. So if I do the math correctly, that's a hundredfold blessing return for that sacrificial seed. And so I started crying. Man, I was all emotional. I called um, the men of God that brought me into the kingdom. And I said, hey, what should I do with this $700? And they were like, um, keep on tithing. Tithe from there now. And ever since that situation, that experience in my life, I've never, ever, no matter how much or how little I have, I've never stopped sowing into the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about giving your money to a church. I'm talking about sowing your seed into the kingdom of God because God wants to take care 
of the needy. God wants to take care of the poor. God wants us to advance the kingdom. God wants us to expand the kingdom. And we do that by sowing into his kingdom. Listen, when you sow into my ministry, it's like a revolving door. I, I, bless, the, I bless you for blessing the ministry and it goes right back out. Uh, my tax guy is always happy to see that because he's like, listen, you know, you're not supposed to be making any profits in your ministry. I said, absolutely. I know that. So I don't know if he's trying to say that there's other ministries that are, you know, soaking it up and making profits and you're supposed to be a not for profit organization. So he just, you know, he's so happy that he sees it coming and he sees it go out because he said that's the way uh, a charitable organization is supposed to be. Amen. So thank you so much. I know I camped out there for a little bit, but let's pray. I don't see any prayer requests. So let me pray for everybody that's on right now and everybody's going to connect and everybody that's going to watch this at their own time and, you know, at their own leisure. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for tonight. I thank you so much for today. I thank you so much for the present. I thank you, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Shammah, the God who is present, the God who is in your situation, and the God who is in my situation. I thank you, Lord God, that you do care for the needy, and that you do care for the poor, and that you use us, Lord God, that you would give us the spirit of generosity, that we, you would continue to pour into us so we could pour out into other lives. So, Father God, I speak life. I speak financial breakthrough. I speak health to everybody's body right now in the name of Jesus, to our to our minds that you, Lord God, will clean our minds of any um, illegal thoughts, any thoughts that provoke us for suicidal thoughts. I come against those thoughts in the name of Jesus, and I pray, Lord God, your anointing power to be evident in this blaze, this Bible study tonight. I speak for awkward angels. I pray that people will sense and feel the wind of Arkwin Angels right now flowing through their homes, flowing through their workplaces, in their cars, that they would sense the power of your Holy Spirit and the power of your Arkwin Angels right now in the name of Jesus. I pray all of this by faith, knowing that you hear the prayers of the righteous and your word, your word, Lord God, says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So thank you, Lord God, for the power of prayer and the power and the honor, Lord God, to be in your in your presence. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. And the saints said, amen and amen. Uh, let me hold my phone on the other side of this room. If not, I'm going to be scrambling because all we have is a minute to share this out. And I'll be right back. on the other side of the studio and I didn't realize how many steps that takes to get to the other side but amen I got it amen I shared it out to as many as I could in that minute I, I do it with you I try to remain faithful to that minute as you remain faithful to that minute thank you so much for sharing this out listen um, when we get to heaven man we're gonna have a lot of of things that we can't see on this side um, but there's a lot of lives being shifted and changed because of the power of God's word and we're going to have one great old party for all eternity. You come to my mansion that, started, that, that God is already prepared for me. Amen. And in heaven, we're going to hang out, man. We're going to have a good time. There's going to be music flowing all the time. We're going to have a good time. And we are going to recognize each other. Amen. And the Bible has some, you know, clues that say that we will recognize one another. Uh, I'm just trying to sort out in my mind, you know, there's no marriage in heaven. So I'm like, man, what's up with me and my wife? But since I'll recognize her, I'll know who she is. I think that's what that means in the scripture, that people recognize each other. Amen. Because I want eternity with her. I don't want just this time with her. I want eternity with her. Amen. And we're going to share freely. So tonight, let's talk about it. Let's talk about sharing freely. And, um, you know, 
Get it out of your mind that it's about me asking for money because that's not the case at all. When I say share freely, it's actually something that I want to provoke us to give. It doesn't have to be to me, trust me. But we are supposed to be sharely and f- sharing freely because we were freely given um, everything. God gave us his very best, right? He gave us his very best. He gave us the son, the only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God didn't create the son because Jesus is God, but he gave his son. Um, so that way, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And those who never get the chance to hear the gospel message, God is also a righteous judge. So he would judge those people accordingly and righteously. He's a just God. So if someone from a remote part of the world right now, and there's a plane flying over, a remote part of the world right now never heard the gospel, does that mean they're going to hell? I don't think so. God knows everything. He knows, well, they didn't have a chance to hear the gospel, so he'll look at their lives, right? He'll look at their lives. Did they look up at the heavens above them and come to a point where they had to realize that there had to be a God? Well, maybe that would be enough for those people who've never heard this gospel message, right, before. Maybe that would be enough for them to inherit the kingdom of God. That's between them and God. But while we're here, let's give out all we can give out. Amen. And we have the gospel. We have the scriptures. So let's give it out. Deuteronomy chapter 15. Old Testament, Deuteronomy. This is one of um, the books that Jesus quoted out of his own mouth most often. Um, He quoted out of Deuteronomy. Uh, 15. This is chapter 15, verses 10 to 11. The Bible says, give generously to the poor. Specific, right? Give generously to the poor, not grudgingly. So it's really like, <laughs> it's really plain right there. The plain things are the main things, and the main things are the plain things in the scriptures. So give generously to the poor, not grudgingly, for the Lord your God will bless you. And some things you do, a couple of things you do, no, the Bible says, For the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. But what did you do to get the everything part done in your life? Or get the everything part flowing in your life? You gave generously to the poor. And you gave it happily, freely. You shared it freely without grudging about it. For the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. There will always be some in the land who are poor. Always. When God says always, that's a God word. Always, all the time, for all eternity. That's a God word. There will always be some in the land who are poor. That is why I am commanding you to share freely. God is commanding his people to share freely with the poor and with the other Israelites, the other children of God in the the land, because they're in need. The question I put here is, Who in your life, in your life, in your world situation, in your sphere of influence, who in your life has needs that you, you can fulfill or at least help fulfill? Talk about, you know what I mean? There's somebody in your life right now that you are the agent of change in their lives. What chapter and verses in Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy chapter 15, Deuteronomy 15, um, verses 10 and 11. I just read it. Amen. So, apologize if I didn't say that earlier. Yeah, Deuteronomy 15, 10, and 11. So you wonder, man, if somebody in your life right now is in need and God wants to use you to help them with that need, then we have to go to a scripture where God just said he will give us everything we need to get it done, to help somebody out. Everything that we do As long as we give generously to the poor, uh, not grudgingly, the Lord God, the Lord our God, will bless us in everything we do. It's time for us to really start believing what the Word says. He says everything, um, that's everything. There's nothing that God says when He says everything. I don't care if you look it up in Greek, Aramaic, Hebrew, um, Latin, um, whatever language. When God says everything, that means everything. Everything that's lined up with his word over our lives, he said he will bless it. 
And he showed that in the story of Joseph, uh, betrayed by his own brothers, you know, thrown into a pit, uh, was, you know, got into, uh, he was brought into slavery and all the other stuff. But God was with Joseph through it all. Even got wrongly accused, falsely accused of trying to rape, um, you know, the wife of the man that was in charge. Right. And got thrown into jail, but God was with Joseph. So he gained even favor in jail. Like it goes on because God says, I will be with you. God told Joseph, I'm going to be with you. And the people around him knew that God was with him. They were like, man, this guy got thrown into a pit, got sold into slavery, got locked up and God was still favoring him. God was still not favoring him. God was giving him favor with men and he had favor with God. Amazing. When God says he's going to be with you, he's going to do something with you, for you, through you, he's going to do it. So we have nothing to worry about when we when it talks about giving out. Amen. It's not our amount that God is asking for. He's asking for us to be willing. Have done it with my heart and arms open. Amen. Yes. And not only does that make you feel good, but it pleases the Lord, which is the most important. And blessing somebody else in their time of need sets you up and sets me up for being blessed in our time of need because the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do Deuteronomy 15 10 11 now it's going to be somebody that's smarter than me that knows more scripture than me that's going to probably say that the scripture doesn't apply to the new covenant doesn't apply to a Christian amen I'm not that smart I'm just reading what God said to his people and I know he's talking to Israel. I know he's talking to, to his people, Israel. I know he's talking to his children. And I know this is before Jesus got crucified on the cross, you know, chronologically. But in God's mind, when he speaks a thing, he's talking about today, yesterday, and the future. Right? He's all eternal. So he sits outside of the time frame that we might think about. So I wonder, why are the poor so important to God? So I said, well, okay, let me look it up. Why are the poor so important to God? Proverbs 14.31. Let me see if I can start um, doing this to get it quicker for you. Proverbs 14.31. Let's see if I can do this faster. Yep. Proverbs 14.31. I'm going to be repeating it a little bit because um, just to keep my mind. Proverbs 14 and verse 31. This is the Amplified Version. You know, I like the Amplified. But he who is quick-tempered exposes and exhausts his foolishness for all to see. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. A calm and peaceful and tranquil heart is life and health to the body. But passion and envy are like rottenness to the bones. And here it is, verse 31. He who oppresses the poor taunts and insults his maker. But he who is kind and merciful and gracious to the need, needy honors God. I repeat, Proverbs 14, 31. He or she who oppresses the poor taunts and insults God. God has so much compassion for the poor. I'm not talking about, let, let's clear out what I'm talking about poor. I'm talking about those who are in need that we have access to, like Right now, I could go to my kitchen and I could turn on the faucet. And although a lot of people say, yeah, don't drink from that water, uh, I have it available. If I had to drink from the faucet water, I will drink. But do you realize that somebody on the other side of the world right now has no access to any type of water? And if they do have access to water, it has a lot of, you know, uh, por uh, not por yeah, like poisonous things in the water. It's unhealthy drinking water. So now we have missionaries around the world trying to just give people clean drinking water and digging wells and all that. To this very day, you would think that in 2021, we wouldn't be digging wells. Everybody would have running water, but that's not true. And that proves what the Bible says. The needy will always be in the land. The needy will be always among us, always be among us. The poor will always be among us. It's the word of God. God said it because he knows what he's saying. And what he says is always true and is always right. So he, he who oppresses the poor taunts and insults his maker. But he, but he who is kind and merciful and gracious, kind, merciful and gracious to the needy, honors God. Uh, I'd rather do 
the the B version of that. I want to honor God by giving graciously, right? By giving mercy, amen, by being kind to those who are in need. Because one day, I might be that one in need, amen? And if I, if I rewind the tape, I've never, as far as I know, I've never mocked anybody that was poor, even before um, God saved me, you know, the Lord saved me. I was just not like that because I knew what it felt like to be, to have less than others, just to put it like that. You know, my mom wasn't rich. My dad wasn't rich. My family, we was we didn't grow up like in mansions. We grew up in the projects, in the hood, Brooklyn, New York. Um, you know, welcome to my story. But we knew how other people lived. And I don't think, I don't think my brothers, my brother, because my, my younger brother wasn't around at that time, but I don't think we were ever jealous about it. We just knew that there was more, that we could get more, that they, we were able to get more. My mom never, you know, um, told us that we couldn't we couldn't do anything. She always approved of everything we did that was right. Like, you know, she'd go, go for it. My dad was the same way. He was a hard worker. He, he was really not satisfied with what he was doing or what he was making. But he knew that, you know, he wanted everybody to do well. And if he, my dad, I got it from my dad. If, if you needed something and he had it, you have it. You could ask anybody about my pops. If he, if he had his last $10 and you needed nine, he'll give it to you. As a matter of fact, he'll give you the whole 10 and then he'll figure it out after that. I've seen him do it with my own eyes. When he passed uh, away, I was walking um, back to my grandma's house. May she rest in peace. I, was, I used to live with my grandma for a little while. Uh, she wanted some Chinese food. So I went to go get her some Chinese food and it was walking this is walk. Came back. When I was coming back, uh, one of the guys, because uh, they used to call him um, Buckwheat. They used to call my dad Buckwheat. They were like, hey, aren't you Buckwheat's son? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, man, um, tell him I'm looking for him, blah, blah, blah. And I, I said, and this was already, already a year after he was passed. And I said, oh, sorry, man. Uh, I can't tell him. Oh, why can't you tell him? You know, that's the, like, that's my, my man. I said, no, I can't tell him. He passed away last year. This dude passed out. Passed out. Like right there. Boom. On the spot. And I was like, what, what just happened? Dude passed out. I shook him. He came to. He, he woke up a little bit. He says, how could that be? I just seen him the other day. I was just talking to him the other day. He was like an angel to me. Whatever, whenever I needed something, he was there. He gave it to me. That was that was the people who knew my dad said the same thing. They could not believe that um, you know he was he was gone. <laughs> and he's not the only person that was so shocked after my dad was gone for a little while. Um, his friends were bumping to me because I they said I looked just like him, and they would say, hey, you know. Uh, tell Papo, some people just call him Papo, I call him Pops, other people would call him Buckwheat, or I knew his street names, right, but um, they were all shocked, and they would always say, man, he, he, he was so generous, he always gave so friendly, you know, he was always there for us, right, so that's, that's a, a real nice testimony to leave behind, a person who was uh, freely giving, and was able to share, and was able to give grace, gracefully without grudge without being grudgingly giving. Let me give you some more. Right? Matthew 5, 3. Matthew 5, 3. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, has something to say. Well, he had a couple of things. He had a lot to say about it. But uh, this, was, this one was when Jesus was talking about the poor. In the book of Matthew, I just had it, chapter 5, verse 3. Jesus said, blessed, that means spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired. Jesus is in red. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, those devoid of spiritual arrogance, those who regard themselves as insignificant, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. This is a spiritual, uh, a poor, spiritually poor, right? said it blessed are the spiritually prosperous happy to be admired right are the poor in spirit those devoid of spiritual arrogance those who regard themselves as insignificant in other words blessed are the humble i've noticed that a poor person either spiritually or in the natural uh, a lot of them are humble i've met we've done um ministry to the poor and the homeless lots of times and you meet some people that are real, really, really humble. 
like um, they're like they're not feeling sorry for themselves. Actually, um, rumor was, and I don't know how true it was, but the the lady that we used to go, we knew a lady years ago that had her own food truck, and she used to go to the A Street Bridge in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and underneath there there was people living there, and she said that there was actually a, a king. He was a king of a of you know of a country. I forgot the name of the country that he was actually a king. He left it all, um, his kingship and everything, and became a bum and gave all his money to, you know, to the needy and lived as one of them. And I've met him several times, and it makes sense how why he was always like everybody else was, you know, and you know, jeans and shirts or whatever they could get. He was always walking around in a suit. I never, and he was homeless. So maybe it was true, maybe it wasn't. All I know that that's an amazing thing for someone to be in a position so high in their country and then to come to a point where like, you know, what? I'm giving it all away. I don't know what happened. She did tell me what happened to him. She did tell me the story. Um, you know, he spoke. Uh, you could tell he was from a different country when he spoke, but he spoke some English, broken English, and he loved her. Every time he would see her, he would embrace her. He would thank her. He would go like this a lot to her. And um she told me the story. I just, I have to would have to get in connection with her. I haven't heard from her in years, but it was an awesome story when she told me, and I just can't remember all the pieces. So I'm not gonna, I don't want to make nothing up. But he freely gave out what he had to all the homeless, and he himself became homeless and lived among them. Jesus bankrupt heaven and came down to his very own, and his very own rejected him, but he became. In the form of a man, in the form of a person, so he could show us, like how to live this out. So he humbled himself, amen. But I don't think I know a lot of people say Jesus was broken. His disciples, I don't think he was broke. He had a treasurer. I don't know what you would need a treasurer if you had no money. Why would you need a treasurer? He had Judas as the treasurer. Anyway, that's not, you know, it's up for debate. It's not gonna, um, it's not gonna change anything about the gospel, whether I'm right or wrong. Amen. Let's give you some more. Um, he, you know, Jesus said that he came uh, to preach the gospel to the poor, right? I don't know if it's Matthew 26, 11. Let's see if, of, if my memory is correct. Matthew 26 and verse 4, I believe it is around there. When Jesus had finished this, this is Matthew 26, verse 1. When Jesus had finished this discourse, he said to his disciples, You know that the Passover is coming in two days, and the Son of Man is to be betrayed and handed over for crucifixion. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the courtyard of the elegant home of the Jewish high priest. So the high priest, the religious people at the time, they had money, they had prestige, they had position. Whose name was Caiaphas. And plotted together to arrest Jesus by stealth, in other words, on the down low, and kill him. They were plotting to kill the Lord. But they said it must not be during the festival, during Passover, otherwise there might be a riot among the people. Now when Jesus was back in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, he was among the lepers, the sinners, the tax collectors, Jesus, our Lord. A woman came to him with an alabaster vial of very expensive perfume. You know, like, you know, more than what Mary Kay sells. You know what I'm saying? Something, something more than that. Very, very expensive perfume. And she poured it on Jesus' head as he reclined at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were indignant and angry, saying, Why all this waste of money? Why all this waste of money, they thought. For this perfume might have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. So they try to clean that all up and say, no, 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 we could have took the money and gave it to the poor. I don't think they were thinking that. I think they wanted to take that money and not only just give it to the poor, but make sure they could, you know, advance from that money as well to keep the ministry going. But Jesus, aware of the malice of this remark, said to them, why are you bothering the woman? She has done a good thing to me for you always for you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me, the one who has it all, the one who owns it all, right? So God really, through Jesus, through the word, Holy Spirit, God, Father, 
God always talks to the, to the poor and about the poor and actually defends the poor. There's a scripture, I can't recall it, but I'm paraphrasing. It goes pretty much that if you rob or steal from the poor, you're actually robbing and stealing from God. He doesn't, he, he will defend the poor, the ones who are in need, the ones who have less than what we have. He will defend them. So don't go around saying, oh, you're this, that, and the third. Listen, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And we live in a blessed nation. Oh, this nation is corrupt. It's a blessed nation. Because when I've met people that came to this country thinking that they was going to see nothing but rubble and debris because they thought this was a cursed nation. That's debatable whether we're cursed or not. They came over here, they were shocked. I used to do Uber and Lyft, and I used to drive them from the airport. They were coming from countries I'll, I'll remain, I'll leave unnamed, right? And they were looking around, they were looking at the trees, they were looking at the building, the skyscrapers, they were looking at the plenty that this land in America has, and they were like, wow, I never, and several people, they would tell me, I, don't, I never thought a cursed little nation would be so prosperous. Because in other parts of the world, we're not their favorite nation. Um, some parts of the world call the U.S. The de one of the devils. So when they came, when they come over here, they expect to see, you know, chaos, rubble, and debris. Nothing standing, you know. Uh, back in the day, I don't know about now, no offense to anybody who's from the Boogie Down Bronx. But back in the day, we used to call it the Burnt Down Bronx. Because back in the day when I was coming up, talking about the 80s, you know. There was a lot of burnt down houses in the, in the Bronx for whatever reason. They were expecting to see that. When they came from other countries to came to the United States, they thought from what they heard from their country about our country, they thought we were a cursed nation. So I can't go around saying I'm cursed. I have to go around saying I'm blessed because God has blessed me and God has blessed you too. If you have a phone, a digital device, if you have a TV, if you have a fridge, if you have running water in your house, if you have clothes on your body, if you have a roof over your head, if you have health insurance, medical insurance, auto insurance, if you have a job, if you have a business, if you have an idea, if you have a scripture, if you have, you're blessed. I know I take that for granted a lot. And I, you know, I rebuke myself right now in the name of Jesus because I do take advantage of that or I take that for granted. But that's a blessing. So we can't go around saying we're cursed. We have to go around saying we're blessed because God blessed us. And we're blessed because we were uh, without him one time, without God. And he blessed us with the abundant life that he promised. Because Jesus didn't only promise us to survive, to, you know, to just get by. He promised us life and life in abundance. But what are we going to do with that abundance? Are we just going to give me, give me, take, 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 get big screen TVs, fancy cars, big houses, and all this stuff? Or are we going to freely get and freely give and honor God with our giving to others and to those who are in need? Somebody in your life right now, you are the angel. You are the answered prayer. You are the agent of change for that person in your life, whoever that person might be. It might be a whole family, and all they need is a smile from you, or maybe they need a collection plate from the church to go to their family, or they might need groceries for the week, or they might need, need their light bill to be paid. Whatever the case may be, there's somebody in my life, somebody in your life that's in need, and we freely get to get to give. Uh, I had a verse, a gospel rap verse that I used to do. So I don't give to get, I get to give. Right? I don't, I don't, you know, I get to give. I'm trying to remember the verse, but it escapes my mind right now. It's a long time ago that I wrote it. Yeah, I don't give, to, oh, I don't live to work. I think I work to live and I don't give to get what I get, I give. Something like that along those lines. Because God was showing me that early on when I first got saved. And I've always been that type of person anyway. Whatever there was a need and I had it, you had it. I've always been like that. Thank God because I saw that modeled in my family. Little do they know that there's a lot of believers in this country holding it up in prayer. Amen. Holding the country up in prayer, right? Amen. Is that what you mean, oh, Sister Mary Jealous, the country in prayer? Because we are a blessed nation. I know. I know. We don't get it always right. That's because there's human beings living on 
in the United States. So we're never going to always get it perfect. Amen. We're blessed. But God did bless this nation. Whether, you know, you're on the, the right side, the left side, independent, you know, whether your candidate is, um, is president or not or whatever, it doesn't really matter. You know, what matters is, are we blessing or uh, being a blessing to those who are in need? God has a lot to say about the poor. A lot to say. Like I have like 20 scriptures right here. I'm not going to get to them all, but I'm trying to get to some key ones that I'm feeling the Lord telling me to share. Galatians 2.10. Galatians 2.10. All over the scriptures, Old and New Testament. 2.10. Bible says, they asked one thing, that we remember the poor, the very thing I was also eager to do. Apostle Paul talking to the church. Let, let me back it up, give you some, some background about it. Apostle Paul speaking here, but on the contrary, they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised Gentiles, just as Peter had been entrusted to proclaim the gospel to the circumcised Jews. So in other words, Apostle Paul said, look, I, I was given this honor to spread the gospel to the Gentiles. Peter, the Apostle Peter, was given the honor to spread the gospel to the Jews. So they have both covered, right? For he who worked effectively for Peter and empowered him in his ministry to the Jews also worked effectively for me, for Apostle Paul, and empowered me in my ministry to the Gentiles. Verse 9 of Galatians chapter 2. And recognizing the grace that God had bestowed on me, James and Cephas, Peter and John, who were re reputed to be pillars of the Jerusalem church, gave to me a Barnabas, <laughs> the right hand of fellowship, so that we could go to the Gentiles with their blessing and they to the circumcised Jews. They asked only one thing, that we remember the poor the very thing I was also eager to do. So they were blessing each other, setting each other up for ministry, giving, you know, what was needed and what was necessary. But they said, listen, we're going to do this, but let's not forget. Let's not forget the poor. Let's not forget the needy. Let's not be like that story in the scripture about um, the man who got beat up on the side of the road and the religious people would see him all beat up and bloodied and they would go across the street and keep on walking until a, the good Samaritan came and saw the man, picked up the man, set up the man um, with a, a hotel stay or whatever it was and told the owner of the place that he set up the man to stay at. He said, I'm come back and I'll pay the rest. You know, here, here, here's the down payment to his stay, to his Airbnb, right? And... I'll come back. When I come back, I'll pay the rest. Good Samaritan. Let's not be the one. Let's be the Good Samaritan. Let's not be the people that are religious and just want to build our own kingdom or build a big ministry or fly around and lear jets and, and all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with ministries that have jets and ministries that have fancy this and fancy that as long as they're not forgetting the poor. As long as they remember the poor. Because Apostle Paul said that's the very thing I'm eager to do is to go and reach the poor with the gospel message. Money is secondary. The good news is first. Think about it. When the good news is preached, it's free. I preach the good news right now. It's free. You don't get charged for watching a live stream, I don't think. But we kind of do pay for a live stream because you have to pay for the phone service, the internet, right? You, have, you paid for the device that you're watching um, the live stream on. Um, the equipment that I'm using, it was had to be paid for. I'm not stealing anything to do any work for the kingdom. But but you know what I mean? It's free right now. It seems to be free that you're getting this live stream. And then when you speak the word of God, there was a cost for us to speak this word of God. And it cost God the Father, it cost him his son to get this gospel out. But there was really no money involved. But Jesus did say to Telestai on the cross, he said, the debt is paid in full. Sounds like currency to me. Whatever that debt was, I know I couldn't afford it. And Jesus didn't owe the debt. I couldn't afford to pay the debt. Neither could you afford to pay the debt, but he paid it. He said, the debt is paid. The sin debt is paid. So whether that meant money, currency, or whatever, 
All I know is that it had God placed value on his people. Listen, I was bankrupt in my mind until God filled my mind with his mind, the mind of Christ. I was, I can't say I was broke, busted, and disgusted right before Jesus saved me. I can't say that. I'll be lying. I'm not trying to reinvent the testimony to make people feel sorry for me. I had a couple of dollars. I had a car. I had a house that I didn't pay the mortgage for for half a year and a half because um, I filed bankruptcy. So I was just being slick with the system. You know, that was before Jesus. Before Jesus, I wasn't saved. So um, so I can't say I, I didn't have no money. You know, I was okay. I had a, a, two, a job. And then it got to a point where I was already running a, a, a studio, a recording studio. So if I got the money from the job or not, it really didn't matter. Money was coming in from the studio. If not from the job, whatever, I wasn't really concerned about it because I couldn't say that I was broke. I couldn't say that. But there's people that don't have that type of luxury to say that they, they never knew what it was to be without money. They never knew what it was to be without food in the fridge. They never knew what it was to lose their car um, to like a repo. They never knew what it was to lose a house. Listen, there's people out there right now that are struggling. Still haven't got their stimulus check. Still haven't got their assistance for their business. And, you know, I can't go around rescuing everybody's financial issue. But I can introduce everybody to somebody that has all the financial issues and all the financial breakthroughs available through him and through his word. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's all I had. I hope we um, don't forget the poor, the, the poor that are in need. Right. Um, Jesus said they will always be among us. God, the father said in Deuteronomy, they will always be in the land. Um, and um, we're told um, through the apostle, the apostles not to forget the poor. So all through the scriptures, all through the Bible, man, you're going to see that God protects the poor. He ha has concern for the poor. And some scriptures say we were just like that. We were broke. Uh, we were, you know, without hope, without God. But then Jesus stepped on the scene, right? Redeemed us. He had the redemption ticket. He had the coupon for our eternal life. Amen. Some of us grabbed the coupon and went shopping. Other ones other people rejected the coupon and they say, you know, I'll pay full price. Listen, if you're if you're like me, we ain't trying to pay full pay full price for anything anymore. Right? That's what discounts are all for all about. That's what coupons, that's what groupon is about. But God did better than a groupon. He did better than a coupon. He he has the redemption, the ticket to redemption for eternal life. It's in his hand. And he wants to freely share it. And he wants us to freely share his message as well. So that's all I had. I hope you were blessed. I hope you are just living the life that God intended you to live. Amen. Don't hold back anything of what God has been doing in your life. If he wants you to speak something, speak it. Rely on his word. Rely on the spirit of God. Amen. That's in us. Don't don't back down. We need each other. Let's let's rise up. Everybody's coming out with their agenda. And they've been like trying to shove it all in our faces. There all these different agendas. But we can't back up. We can't back down. We need to rise up to the occasion. If God has us here for this time, for this space, for this place, amen, uh, it's the perfect timing because God doesn't don't make mistakes and he's not going to be caught out there shocked like, oh, what is he going to do now? No, God knows exactly what he's doing and he knows who he's going to use. And let's just be available. Let's just be available um, to God's plan. Amen. Because it's a tremendous plan. Amen. Right, Sister Joyce? Amen. So uh, thank you all for hanging out with me. I know we went a little over. Amen. And I got to get my trading in. I was trading, HFX trading. And I'm going to, this is day, let's see, it started Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. This day three of my five-day money challenge. I want to show people that there's ways, right, to make income from home um, using maybe an iPad, laptop from your home. In less than 15 hours, in five days, you can make a full-time salary from your home. Amen? But you know me. I have to do it myself and prove it to myself. Amen? Before I could go around saying anybody could do it. But I know for sure. Um, if I could do it, pretty much anybody could do it. I'm not the smartest cookie in the, in the cookie jar, right? But, amen, God has blessed me, though. And I hope he continues to bless you. Continue to pray for me and my family. Please, and I'll continue to pray for you and your family as we move forward together in victory, knowing that God um, wants us to cover the poor. He wants us to cover all those 
that are in need. Amen. Come together as a kingdom of God and be the hands and feet of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. So that way it, we won't be perfect, right? But we'll be blameless. They won't blame us for any economic issues because the kingdom of God has no economic crisis. The kingdom of this world has economic issues. The kingdom of God has no economic issues. We serve the king of kings and the Lord of lords. We serve a God who owns everything. Amen. So we're never going to be in lack. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Read it for yourself. Right. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace. Blazing Bible studies.